Let's talk about how you can apply sigma notation or summation notation to write in a concise, clear, quick way the sum of a long series of terms. Let's do an example problem where we write a long sum using sigma notation. The sum that we will write in sigma notation begins with the term the square root of 3 over 3 plus 1. The second term, the square root of 4 over 3 plus 2. Then the square root of 5 over 3 plus 3. Even after the first three terms in this what will be a long sum, you should be able to see a pattern here. And when a pattern exists in a sum, it can usually be written with sigma notation. The fourth term is the square root of 6 over 3 plus 4, then you're going to see a dot 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 which which symbolizes that the sum goes on for a while in the same pattern. And then the final term in the sum is the square root of 27 over 3 plus 25. So there's a lot of terms in this sum. Only five of the terms have been written out. But you should be able to see from plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, the whole way up to plus 25, that there are actually 25 terms in this sum. There's a pattern that exists in this sum, and because there is a pattern, we can write it using sigma notation. Recall that sigma notation looks like this, where the, the capital letter S in the Greek alphabet is the sign for sigma. Below it is the starting value for the sum starting some sort of a starting value for the sum. It's called the lower bound. Above the sigma is an N, which stands for the upper bound, the ending point of the summation. And then there's some expression to represent the sum from I equals 1 to N, some sort of an expression. In this sum, the expression will involve two terms with a square root in the top of a numerator and in the denominator, it looks like there's always going to be a 3, regardless of what term in the sum it is. And then there's a, a second value added to the fraction. Let's begin writing this sum. Okay, I have the sum at the top of the screen. We're going to write it using sigma notation. And a good place to start is with the lower value the lower value, which we're going to make a 1. There, there would be a way to write this sum where i starts at 0 or i starts at 3, but the standard way to write an expression in sigma notation is to let i equal 1 as the lower bound. Each of the terms in this sum, each of the terms in the sum, has two terms. Each of the 25 terms in this sum has two terms. The first term is a fraction, and then the second term is uh, simply a constant, an integer, starting at 1 and going the whole way up to 25. In every single term, the denominator of the fraction is always 3. That's not going to change. So when we write this sum, there will be a 3 in the denominator of that first term all the time. So I'm going to put a 3 there. It doesn't matter what the value of i is as we move through the sum. The denominator of the fraction is always 3. Added to the fraction is a value that begins at 1 and goes the whole way up to 25. Our index, our value of i, is starting at 1. We'll make that second term i. The first term in the sum, i will be 1, the second term 2, the third term 3, the whole way to the end of the sum, which ends with the 25. That's the upper bound of the sum. The numerator of the fraction involves a radical, involves a square root specifically. And as you can see, the terms under that radical sign are 3, 4, 5, 6, we go the whole way up to 27. Remember, our sum is beginning in terms of i with a 1. So I'm certainly not going to just put an i inside this square root. That would represent the square root of 1 in the first term. Here, 
we have a square root of 3 in the first term. If I would just put an i here, the last term would be the square root of 25. Our last term is the square root of 27. You can see that each term in the, uh, has under the square root a value that is 2 more than whatever the term is. For example, in the first term, the number under the square root is 3, 2 more than 1. In the second term, the number under the square root is 4, 2 more than the term. i plus 2 is the expression I can put inside the radical. In the first term, again, in the first term when i is 1, this would represent 1 plus 2, the square root of 3. In the last term, when i is 25, i plus 2 would be 25 plus 2, 27. This fits the pattern. In sigma notation, the 25 terms shown at the top of the screen can be represented as the sum as i goes from 1 to 25 of the square root of i plus 2 over 3 plus i.